Thank you very much uh, to both of you, but now I just want to try and uh, pin you down if I can. Um, Rob, you say that it, it's all in unless there's a compelling case that it should be out, but a lot of it is out already. I mean, this is a tax uh, summit where if everything should be on the table, well, the GST is off, the family home and the pension means test is off, cutting negative gearing concessions is off, removing dividend imputations is off, the mining tax is off, the carbon tax is off, question mark as to whether even congestion tax can be on. Can we fix that sound problem too? Please, John, thanks. I think it's it might be you too. I'm not entirely sure that it is that. Uh, anyway, um, with so many things off the table, I mean, how can you work to get them put back on the table? Can you? Well, look, I'm only one. Me is, it, is this on? Yes. Yeah. I'm only one member of Parliament, which um, you know. So um, I can not only entirely irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I can only do what I can do, um, and that is why uh, when. Uh, the Treasurer in particular has been making various public statements to rule various things out. Uh, I have as quickly as I can um, thrown the arms open to an inclusive process um, as publicly as I can to make sure that if anyone has any particular issue that they think is important in this exercise, including the GST, um, bring it on. You know, I want this process leading into this conversation in October to matter. Um, I think it doesn't help anyone that anything is ruled out if we're being fair income about the conversation. Um, and, uh, and my message very much to the Treasurer and to Government is as importantly, if not more importantly, with as much on the table as possible as we can get in a, what is a political environment, the process out of Oct October is going to be critical. Um, Matthias mentioned green papers and white papers. Um, I don't personally think we need to go through more papers. I think the work in many ways has been done. It's now down to considerations and then implementations. And I think those are the, those are the steps along the way. From my perspective, it's all in. Um, you can go to my website. I am throwing up every good idea that comes into my office from every single Australian who wants to participate. From your perspective, it's all in, and you are a very important part of the process, but I wonder to what extent this summit is going to be able to come up with really, I, I suppose, concrete solutions, and you were very optimistic about it, with the GST off the table. That is such a major part of the tax system. Is it like trying to decide how to reform with one hand tied behind your back, even two? Well, if someone comes up with a belter of an idea in regards to GST and wants to submit it, I'm on, you know, and I am only one member of parliament. Um, you know, you've both said I've got particular powers of the moment. Um, use them. <laughs> you know, let's, let's have the debate that everyone's dancing around and let's, let's bring it on and I will do what I can as one member of parliament. If there is a good consideration that comes from, you know, coalition colleagues or anyone in this room or anyone who's watching, um, make a submission. Let's stop looking down the bottom of our schooner glass and whinging about everything, let's get into it. <laughs> Matthias Cormann, should the GST be on the table as part of any tax reform discussion? Well, look, I mean, the GST was a very important uh, reform uh, that was pursued by the Howard government. It was a uh, big tax reform. It was difficult reform. Uh, it was a reform we took to an election back in uh, 1998 at uh, considerable political expense. Now, at the time, there was a robust uh, community debate, and I think it's fair to say that uh, the Australian Parliament at the time entered into a compact uh, with the Australian people that uh, the right uh, and the scope of the GST would be fixed uh, unless uh, all governments unanimously agree to make changes. Now, uh, obviously, uh, you know, the politics of that are just, uh, uh, you know, as was understood at the time, uh, highly unlikely. So I think it is quite, uh, it, it, I think it is quite um, realistic to practically uh, not get too carried away with what may or may not happen in relation to the GST. There are issues with uh, some of the aspects of the GST, in particular the GST sharing arrangements, uh, where uh, because of the way the Commonwealth Grants <coughs> Commission operates, there are actually perverse incentives against, for example, uh, state governments like Western Australia or Queensland uh, properly uh, raising uh, taxes uh, from, uh, the, uh, from the non-renewable non resource. Uh, a, 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 an unintended consequence of uh, the a state government like Western Australia or Queensland uh, removing royalty concessions or increasing royalties, for example, uh, means that they lose way more in GST, in their share of GST revenue, than they would collect 
uh, from any increase in royalties. Now, that is a disincentive against state governments taking responsibility uh, for their own uh, revenue needs, and, and that is something that clearly we should look at. There, there's, there's many things that we can do to improve our tax system uh, without uh, getting distracted by a debate about uh, the right or scope of the GST, which I think uh, has been established as part of a compact with the Australian people uh, back in 2000, 2000.